Hello, this is Mrs. Elke here, and thank you for joining me on Elke Art. Today I am doing a painting and drawing of the town of Bethlehem. It looks something like this. I used a Sharpie and watercolor to create this scene, and because I didn't know exactly what Bethlehem looked like back in Jesus's time, I was able to just kind of imagine what I thought it might be. So I added maybe some hills in the background here for where the shepherds were watching their sheep in the fields. And then of course I have the stable and the buildings and kind of a fun sky. So if you would like to try this little town of Bethlehem, be my guest, follow along and see what happens. I'm beginning with a piece of watercolor paper taped down to a board or a table or a desk. I've got watercolor paint, a cup, a brush all ready to go, and I'm going to start with a Sharpie. If you prefer sh starting with a pencil and then tracing your lines, just in case you need to make some changes, you can do that as well. I'm going to begin by adding a ground. It's going to go across the bottom area of my picture here. I'm just kind of making it so it's not a perfectly straight line, but it's a little bit different. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with my stable right away so that I have that in there. So I'm gonna make a line about right in the middle and then another one close to the edge of my paper. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a little roof here on the top. And then I'm gonna make some interior lines as well so it looks like I've got walls. And this is going to be kind of the main stable here for my picture. Next, I'm going to add kind of a slightly curved line that goes next to my stable and down to make another building. and then I'll make another building to the side of that. Now it really doesn't matter what shape your buildings are. They can look like mine, they can be different. It doesn't really matter. Some of mine are gonna have square tops, some of them are gonna have rounded tops. It's okay to have a variety. Every once in a while, add a rounded top to a square top like I did just now for the stable as well. It is nice as you make buildings to have them at different heights and widths. So I'm trying not to make all of them exactly the same size, but kind of vary in size and shape. I'm gonna start adding in a couple of details right away to this first row of buildings. I wanna put a couple windows in, some doors. I'm keeping it very simple. I'll just add a little door right here and then a little window just by using squares and rectangles. Then I can kind of start working on my second layer of buildings. So I'm gonna pretend that this scene of Bethlehem is maybe kind of on the side of a hill. So some of the buildings will be seen above the others. So I've got my first row in here, basic buildings, basic windows, and then I can kind of build up from there. For my manger scene, I'm going to start with a slightly curved line on the bottom. And this is going to be where the manger is going to be. And then I'll make another curved line kind of resting on top of that one. And then another slightly curved line kind of overlapping that one. That's the basic shape of my manger. And then I'm just going to put a little semicircle for the baby Jesus. Two semicircles actually. I'm going to keep the, the shapes of my other uh, Joseph and Mary very simple as well. I'm just going to start with a line that's kind of close to the manger and then another line that's a little bit farther that kind of hooks over the top for the top of my people. You can make Joseph's a little bit taller than Mary's, but I'm going to connect my hooks. kind of to the other part 
Maybe add a little beard here. Just kind of some details. I'm really trying not to be overly complicated. I'm adding little lines to make it look like they've got robes on here. Little kind of semicircles for faces. But just trying to keep it pretty simple. Maybe I'll even add a hand here for Joseph holding his staff. So see what you can come up with using basic shapes. I think I'm gonna add one more line in here, kind of as the ceiling for the little stable. All right, I'm gonna keep that simple and continue adding some other buildings behind my first row here. So I'll just start with some straight lines here and we'll add kind of some taller buildings. Remember, I'm trying to keep them different shapes, different sizes, different heights. So it's okay if you can kind of make some a little bit taller, some a little shorter, and just kind of explore those various sizes as you are making your town of Bethlehem. It's again, totally okay if your buildings don't look like mine. You can kind of adjust as you go. Thought it might be fun to have kind of an arched doorway here. Then I'll add a couple windows just to fill out the town. Just kind of planning as I go, adding all these little details in. Every once in a while, I'm gonna add a curve to the top of my buildings. It's nice to have that variety in the shapes. We got lots of elements of art at work here. I have lines, of course, I'm using to draw. I've got the shapes, the very basic shapes that I'm trying to keep my town at by just using the rectangles and the squares and the half of a circle. And then space, I'm definitely paying attention to here, right? What's the spacing of my buildings? Where do I want to put them? How large should they be? How small should they be? How am I filling up the space of my paper? So those are the elements I'm looking at right now. Line, shape, and space. Again, just adding some little details, buildings, windows. You can kind of consider that as the buildings get farther away, they should get a little bit smaller because they are a little bit farther, so maybe your buildings aren't quite as wide uh, the farther back that you go, or maybe they're not as tall. You can kind of keep that in mind as well. I'm gonna continue adding until I feel like I've got a good amount of buildings showing in the town of Bethlehem. I also wanna leave some space for the sky and for maybe a distant hill behind my town, so I'm not going to go all the way to the top of the paper. If you look, it kind of fills out the center part of the paper. I've got some space on the bottom that's open and some space on the top, and the town is filling out the middle very nicely. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and add kind of a hill that's behind my little town of Bethlehem. So I'm just going to add a line that kind of comes down, and then we'll go behind some of my buildings. The last thing I wanna add is a star. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my star with black. I'm just gonna do a straight line down, kind of pointing to where the stable is, and then add a cross line to it. And then we'll do some diagonal lines as well. All right, that is my main drawing. Now I wanna add a little bit of detail, a little bit of interest. I went ahead and sped up this part of the video so that you could kind of get an idea of what I'm doing, but uh, I didn't want the video to be super long. So I am basically just adding little dots, um, just a little bit of shading. This gives the, the picture a little bit of value. I also thought it might be nice to have a couple plants, so I wanted to add a little palm tree here in the front. I just made the little trunk and add, added a couple of lines for the branches and then filled those out. I thought that would be a nice addition to the picture. 
I'm gonna add another one over here too, because I thought the foreground was just a little bit empty. So I went ahead and drew another palm branch in. Palm tree with little branches. Then I'm adding a little bit of detail below, maybe even a rock or two down in the foreground. Again, these little dots that I'm adding are called stippling and they're great for adding a little bit of value, a little bit of shading. I'm gonna go ahead and put some of them under the different rooftops just to give a little bit more value to my drawing so it's not just a line drawing. Now we are working into the element of value. Adding a little bit more up here to the top adding a couple extra little details to the tops of my buildings. Adding a couple dots way back on the hill in the distance, just to give it a little bit more interest and value. And now I'm ready to paint. So again, I sped up my video a lot so you can kind of get the idea of the painting. I started off by wetting the sky and I wanted to add some nice pinks right away to the bottom part of the sky and then get into a darker blues towards the top. So by wetting the paper down with just clean water right away and then dropping the colors in, it'll just kind of let the, the color move around um, and kind of mix up in the top. You can even, if you're attached to a board, lift the board and move it around too. And that can create some really pretty sky moments. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and paint something else that's not touching the sky. Remember when working with watercolor that you wanna be really careful to not paint things right next to each other so that the colors don't bleed. So I decided to go down and add some light to where my manger was and then I'm adding some yellow to the windows to make it look like they're lit on the inside with maybe some candlelight that would be on at, in the evening time so that the people could see. I have to kind of let those areas dry before I touch them with other areas. So you may have to kind of come back once they're dry and then add some of the other elements to your painting. I'm gonna maybe paint in some of these doorways with some brown, the tree trunks also with some brown. Maybe find some different elements on the buildings that aren't touching anything else and paint those in as well. And then again, I'm letting things dry in between so that they don't get too, um, they don't bleed together. For the ground, I decided to go with kind of a sandy color. And the same thing for the hill in the background, it's kind of a green mixed with a little bit of brown. The sky is dry by this point, so I can do the hill without worrying about the hill and the sky colors mixing together. I'm just trying to fill in all of the areas of the hill behind the buildings. Next, I'm gonna start filling in the buildings with some other colors, and you can really have fun with this. Um, you can go for maybe not as realistic of a look and go for very bright colored buildings like pinks and purples and blues and greens. I've definitely seen some illustrations of Bethlehem that have some really fun colors. Or you could go more traditional and do kind of those warm colors, those earth tones, um, some browns and golds and tans and things like that. I decided to go for more of a realistic look. So I'm trying to make my buildings more natural colors that they would have been maybe back then. But feel free to have fun with the colors and go vibrant and bright too. That can create kind of a fun illustrative look for this picture. As I am painting these, I am being aware of kind of what's wet and I'm trying to kind of jump around my picture to only paint the sections that are already dry or next to dry areas so that I don't have things bleeding together. If I touch an area that is still wet, my paint will mix with whatever that area is and they could bleed together and maybe give me colors that I didn't necessarily want in those areas. So I am trying to be careful and just paint in areas that are already dry. I'm adding a little bit of extra value here to the ground just by adding a little bit more brown. I like to especially do that on the edges and in the corners. I'm also adding a little bit more interest here on my 
uh, Jesus's family here. So I added some brown on Joseph, some blue on Mary, some brown for the little manger as well. Again, I'm just going in, finishing up, filling out my buildings with color, trying to have kind of a variety of tones and shades. I'm thinking about ways I can have the staple stand out just a little bit more. This reddish brown hopefully will do the trick. And when I'm finished, I can very carefully take my tape off of my picture. I like to pull it away from the middle so that it doesn't rip the painting that I just worked so hard on. And voila, we have a masterpiece. Thank you so much for painting with me today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and check out Elkie Art for more fun art videos. Have a good one.